Good morning and welcome everyone to this introductory talk on studying arts and humanities. You're all very, very welcome. My name is Gillian Pye and I'm Associate Dean for Arts and Humanities at UCD. And this morning, I just want to talk to you a little bit about a couple of things. I want to talk about why I think you should think about studying arts and humanities and what our graduates go on to do when they go out into the world. And um, you'll also have a chance to to meet one of our students um, and also I'll explain to you how you can study arts and humanities at UCD. So I'm going to begin by thinking about why you should study arts and humanities and I'm going to give you three main reasons and in true hit parade style I'm going to count you down from three to one. So at three what's really important about an arts and humanities degree is quite simply the wealth of transferable skills that you get that are going to make you future ready. This is a really interesting uh, statistic. Did you know that according to the World Economic Forum, by 2025, 50% of all of the day-to-day -day tasks in the workplace are going to be done by machines. And that's only going to, to get uh, bigger as we go on. And it tells us something about the way that the world of work is changing incredibly rapidly at the moment. And the graduates of the future are going to need to be able to respond quickly. We shouldn't try to compete with machines. Machines are brilliant at being machines. Um, and what human workers are going to need to do is just to be excellent at being human. And I'll give you an idea of the sort of skills that I'm talking about. Um, this is a list of the top 10 skills of 2025 identified by the World Economic Forum. So this is what is going to be needed in the workplace. And if you look at those skills, most of them actually are the kind of incredibly human skills that we're training in arts and humanities degrees. So things like analytical thinking and innovation, active learning, problem solving, critical thinking and analysis, creativity is really important, leadership and influence and resilience and flexibility. And these are things that we're training explicitly in arts and humanities degrees. And just to explain that in perhaps slightly more concrete terms, Here's a list of the skills that arts and humanities students are learning when they're studying their subjects like history, or English or languages or music and so on. For example, they're using a whole range of information sources like libraries and archives and online media, and they learn to carry out research and to organize information and then analyze it. The world is also increasingly complex and there's often no black and white answer and obviously we know that machines like black and white answers but arts and humanities really train students to try to deal with ambiguity to manage complexity and this is a really really important skill that's only going to become more and more valuable in the workplace. Arts and humanities students have always been particularly uh, distinguished by their written skills and their oral communication skills, and all your subjects are going to train you to, to hone those kinds of things. But um, arts and humanities students, uh, arts and humanities uh, is evolving as, as a discipline, and students nowadays do a lot more than write essays. They use a whole range of digital tools to express themselves. They make videos. They make podcasts, they use visual tools like e-posters or digital pin boards to present their ideas. So arts and humanities students are training their creativity, and that's also really important. Lateral thinking is what makes them flexible. It's what makes them adaptable. And it also makes, obviously, for very appealing and persuasive communication. As you might have gathered, a lot of what arts and humanities students uh, do happens outside the classroom. So organising and managing your own time is really, really important. And our graduates are independent thinkers and they're self-motivated employees. At the same time, there's also a lot of project work in arts and humanities. So uh, students are working in groups on and off campus, collaborating, for example, on shared presentations and on assignments. So all of these skills are skills that are speaking to jobs of the future, which are going to need humans to deal with the kind of complexity that machines can't manage. Society needs strong communicators to be able to explain things, to be able to influence, and it needs self-motivated graduates with resilience and with people skills. So I think this explains why our arts and humanities graduates go on to do such a range of careers. And um, these are the kinds of areas they go into. So. They are, for example, TV uh, broadcasters and journalists. They work in arts and culture. They're writers. 
uh, they're producers, they are entrepreneurs in the business sector, they go into government and into politics as well, or into um, marketing, for example, and media. So there's a huge, huge range of opportunities available for students. So that was number three. Number two is that um, arts is more than what happens inside the classroom. It's a degree that encourages you to add value both within the programme and alongside it. So as well as training all of these skills that I've been talking about in their subjects, students have a lot of opportunities to get actively engaged in using those same skills in hands-on activities that develop their profiles further. So there are, for example, hundreds of student societies and extracurricular activities that offer um, opportunities to, to use the skills, for example, things like writing for newspapers, creating social media content, or taking part in debates, producing radio shows, playing in orchestras, or being involved in drama or fundraising and community actions. So lots of different opportunities that allow each individual to build up their profile and consolidate their education and then take that out into the world. But at the same time, within the programmes, there are also a lot of chances to build your profile further. For example, study abroad is a really important part of our education. It's certainly crucial in an area like modern languages. Any students studying languages are either required or encouraged to go abroad. If you're doing a BA or a BA humanities programme, any student can go abroad, um, either for a full year or in the case of BA humanities, also for a half year. We also have internships as part of the BA Humanities programme, so our students are going out into a whole range of organisations to find out how they can use what they've been learning in their modules. And finally, in all of the BA programmes, there's a chance for you to do a career readiness module. So loads of different ways to build your profile alongside and within the degree. Reason number one has and always has been, you should do what you love. It's really, really important. Whatever you choose to do, whether it's arts and humanities or whether it's something else, you must choose uh, to do something that you're really interested in and that motivates you. And I think the last years have really brought this into focus so much. You need to do something that fulfills you. And when you are doing something that motivates you and fulfills you and you bring that passion and excitement with you, you connect more easily with other people and you get more involved in everything you're doing. And of course, you bring that with you then when you go into the workplace. We know that 95% of employers are going to look to train you on the job when you when you take a job, but what they can't train is that passion and they can't train that enthusiasm. That's something that you have to bring with you. So you really need to think about that. And I think in arts and humanities, we've got a really unparalleled choice. So you should be able to find something that motivates you and interests you. There's a list of our subjects. There's a huge range to look at there. Um, and 25 combinations on the BA uh, programme too. So I've talked to you about some of the skills that you can get uh, when you study arts and humanities. And now I'm going to give you an opportunity to see what that looks like. And we'll share a little video with you. I was always drawn to UCD. It was almost like a home away from home. I think what makes UCD unique is the sheer breadth of the opportunities provided for students. All of these opportunities to try new things, to meet new people, to go new places. I think the main attraction for me was the third year Erasmus to Spain. And now next, I'm doing a journalism placement in British Vogue. The importance of an arts and humanities education cannot be underestimated. I've worked all over the world and really the expertise is unparalleled. Education in a way that's completely holistic. There's so many different types of students from all over the world and all over Ireland. You can meet people in your course, but you can meet people outside your course by hanging out in the social spaces. You're also so close to being able to go into the city. Dublin has an amazing cultural scene. You're never gonna get bored and you're never gonna stop meeting people get involved and run towards the things that you're scared of, please, it would be the best thing you do. So you got a chance there to see our fantastic campus and it really is a wonderful campus with an amazing array of facilities. And um, our students have really been enjoying being back in the classroom of late and, and that's been fantastic for us too. Obviously we're not on campus today for this open day, but we're open and running and teaching and it's been brilliant to be back. 
What I want to talk to you now um, about is just the three ways that you can study arts and humanities in UCD. And we have three programmes, the BA Humanities, the BA Joint Honours and the BA Modern Languages. And I just want to take you through a couple of key points about each of those. And I will start with Modern Languages. Um, this is a programme for students who are really interested in developing their skills in modern foreign languages, French, German, Italian, Spanish. And you can also do some Portuguese. And um, German, Italian, Spanish are available for beginners and non-beginners. For French, you need to have some knowledge of French already. Um, and that is a programme that uh, requires you to spend a year abroad. You're guaranteed to, to have a year abroad at a host institution. And so the whole degree takes four years. It is obviously um, very important uh, for people who want to develop their linguistic skills and linguistic skills are incredibly valuable in the workplace. It takes time and it takes effort to build up proficiency in a language but when you do it can take you an amazing number of places and there are really a lot of opportunities for students with languages out there at the moment. Particularly I would say in the EU where there are a lot of opportunities for Irish uh, graduates, obviously after Brexit, uh, British um, graduates are not eligible for many of those EU jobs anymore, but Irish graduates who have English or Irish plus another two modern foreign languages are in high demand at the moment. So that's a, a very good programme to think about if that's a direction you'd like to go in. The second uh, programme I'm going to introduce you to is our BA Joint Honours programme, and that is our big programme that offers you the opportunity to, st to study two main subjects. And there's a huge choice there, 25 subjects available. It's a great programme for those of you who want to have a little bit of flexibility. Perhaps if you want to try out a subject that you didn't get a chance to study at school, you can try that out in the first year where you study three subjects. And then at the end of that first year, you choose which two you'd like to go forward with. So it's good if you think you might like to try something new. It's also a good choice if you are thinking that you would like to specialise at MA level after your studies. This programme takes three years and then you can go on to your MA afterwards. You can, of course, decide to extend um, that programme by going on a year abroad and then your degree becomes a BA International. And any student of any subject can take an opportunity to go abroad, either to a country in Europe or outside, for example, the US or Japan or Canada. We've got loads and loads of places available for students. And it's, it's a really great way to experience the world and to, to, get, some, to, to get some insights, other insights, um, from, from other countries, other, other cultures. The third programme I'm going to introduce you to is the BA Humanities, and this is a special four-year programme, and um, it consists of structured subject combinations. Either there are a couple of, of the courses within this programme that are single subjects so that you can really focus in, and the rest of them are structured subject combinations of, of three, usually, um, subjects so that you can really um, explore the, the interactions between the subjects. It's, it's very interdisciplinary. And I'll show you the list shortly. What's also special about that programme is the third year, where you have a chance to kind of deepen and extend your experience in a number of ways. You can go on uh, a study abroad programme, either for a whole year or for a semester. And you can combine that then with um, more uh, increased study in your subject in UCD. Um, or you can do a competitive internship. And that's been something that's very, very exciting for us. It's quite new. And you'll have a chance to hear Neve talking about that in a little bit. But these are some of the places that our students have gone out to do internships in. There's a huge range of choice there from um, not-for-profit organisations, creative organisations to media outlets and other kinds of businesses. And that really gives students a chance to see how their skills in arts and humanities will work in, 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 in the, world, the world of employment. And finally, I'm just going to show you that list of um, courses available in the BA Humanities. You can see the three focused uh, programmes, English Literature, History and Irish Studies, and then the others are combinations, for example, Classics, Art History, Archaeology. And I know that Neve um, is a student of Classics, English and History, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about her experience now. Thank you, Gillian, for introducing me. Um, she's right. I'm in final year, fourth year of Classics, English and History here in UCD. So I was actually the first year of our humanities courses, um, which actually gave me quite a unique experience as well, because like we were very lucky in the fact that our course were asked 
to participate in focus groups and like shaping the course. So we've all kind of had a hand in like what our studies would look like in the years to come, um, which has been absolutely fantastic because it means that there's a lot of interdisciplinary modules that we take every year, um, which I love. I think the interdisciplinary modules are, you know, some of the most valuable modules you take in college because you're really learning about that like intersection between your subjects, you know, how other things work together, working with different kinds of academics who work in different ways. Um, so it's, it's really valuable in that way. And it's a good way to get to know your course as well, because um, in my year anyway, there's 30 of us who specifically do classics, English and history. And it's quite nice to like get to know everyone who's, you know, doing the exact same pathway as you. And it's funny because we're all going on to do so many different things next year, um, which I think really speaks to the use of an arts and humanities degree and like what it can be used for in a career path. Like some people are going on to further academics and, you know, looking to do masters, PhDs. Some people are going on to do the PME in teaching, which you can do after you've done either the three-year or the four-year humanities. Um, you can go on and do the two-year PME. And um, people are going into marketing, people are going into journalism, and um, people are going into creative industries, um, like film and TV, theater, um, which is just incredible. Like you see this really wide breadth of interest from people who've all done the same course. Um, but that's because in UCD, it's because it's so big, we have so many different lecturers with different specialties. And I can be in the exact same course as someone and we can have done completely different modules based on our interests, which is something that you won't get in a lot of other places because it's just not as big and you don't have, <clears throat> excuse me, that opportunity as much where I've gotten to specialize in such niche, niche things that I absolutely adore. Like I've really gotten to focus on um, modern Irish history and looking at a lot of the influences of like gender and sexuality and the Catholic church. Um, and that would be something that's very close to my heart where other people have looked like specifically like military history or, you know, ancient um, art in Rome, which is really, really cool. Um, another reason I was really drawn to UCD bar like the big campus bar again the amazing academics you get to work with the huge range of modules and um, is the real community we have on campus like it it always felt like a home away from home for me because I was commuting in and um, bed an hour and a half so I was like I'm committed to staying my whole day in UCD and filling it up with all the things that I can try and um, and because it's like a little kind of city campus, everyone on campus is either a student or a lecturer or a local walking their dog, which is also very exciting. Um, and you get to see like all these people and you can kind of go up to anyone and be like, oh, where is this building? And they'll send you on your way as you're running from one end of campus to the other. Um, and then we have our like dedicated student center, which is like my personal haven basically, um, because that's where all our societies and stuff are run and the students union. Um, I've been on the Students' Union the entire time I was in college and it's a great way to um, kind of hone your like leadership skills and like advo advocacy skills as well and um, you know whether you're going to be a class rep or a campaign coordinator and um, it's really good and doing arts and humanities you learn so much about like critical thinking and working with others and like um, public speaking and stuff that it's really helpful in those situations also and then societies are another really really incredible thing you can do in UCD we have over 100 societies over 70 sports clubs like if you have an interest in anything there is a society for you which is so cool and um, I personally was involved in drum sock really heavily over the time I was in UCD and um, when I was in first year it was the first time I'd ever been in a play and um, and then I was the auditor last year so you can really like work your way up in these things and experience so many new things at a time at like all my friends and um, and then there's actually a group of us from classics this year six of us who are doing a radio show on Belfield FM about access and classics and um, you know if you're coming from because obviously classics is like kind of only available in private schools and um, mostly and then in some public schools it's kind of more limited so like most of the people I'm in college with doing classics you know didn't get the chance to do it at secondary school and it's something that I would definitely really consider taking as like your third subject in first year if you're doing, going to do the the joint honours and um, because it's a really really fantastic subject and some amazing amazing lectures are on it. 
Another big thing that was like really important for me when I was going to UCD was in third year, the thought of doing an internship. Um, I was so, so lucky in the fact that I applied and was accepted to the Little Museum of Dublin. So I worked there as an archival intern in third year. Um, and kind of through the work I did there, I've actually been kept on and I now work as their head of archiving, which is a bit crazy. But um, again, one of the many opportunities that was kind of afforded to me as an arts and humanities student, because I was able to come into an internship and take on responsibility and take on independent work. Um, and I was really happy to like adapt to new situations and, you know, focus and do things independently because like you do so much independent study in arts. Um, and that was something that they were really impressed with. And thankfully I was able to like keep working with them then. And yeah, that's now what I do in the final year. I work in a museum, which is really cool. Um, and I think the internships are just such an invaluable experience because even from the whole application process, like learning how to like write a good CV and do a good interview is so, so important. So yeah, this is, I feel like I could talk for hours about how much I love UCD um, and everything it's given me, but that's kind of the highlights <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Neve. It's really great to hear about your experience and you're a brilliant advert for, for arts and humanities students. I think it really kind of brings home just how many opportunities there, there are to be had and, and you yeah. seem to have really kind of sucked the marrow out of your <laughs> studies. And that passion and the enthusiasm really comes across. And I think that's, you know, that's, that is absolutely invaluable, you know, if you, if you feel that and, and it really gives you something for your whole life. Because when we're studying it should be for our whole lives. It is about getting a job. It is about getting employment, but it's also about being fulfilled and bringing that back into the world. And I can see that you're doing that. That's fantastic. Very good. All the while, I can see questions coming into the chat. And I know that Ema has been taking some questions there. So Ema, I don't know, do you have um, questions that you want to bring? Yeah, I'd be delighted to, Gillian. Thank you very much. And thanks to everyone for sending through all their questions. Um, we got a lot of questions on students who don't know what subjects they want to progress with. What advice can you give them, Gillian? Well, I think it's very important to, to, to do your research as much as possible. So definitely go onto the website, um, my UCD, and have a look at the have a look at the different subjects, have a look at the courses that are available, dig right down into it and see, okay, if I'm studying English, what will what are what modules are on offer for me? And have a look and see if you're interested in those. Um, you can also get in touch with us. You can get in touch with our students uh, via the website. And you can also, there's, I think there's a chat uh, function, isn't there, Ema, that students can use if they want to ask another student about what it's like to study. That's something to do. And get in touch with us as well. You're very, very welcome to send us an email. The email addresses for the different schools are in our brochure. You can send us an email if you have a question about a particular subject. I think that's, that's another really good way. We're always here and, and available to answer your questions. I have another question for you, Gillian, from Ashling. Ashling is wondering, for classics, English and history, are modules in these in line with the National Teachers Council requirements, as she would like to teach possibly English with classical studies? OK, well, I think, as, as Neve already said, a lot of students do go in uh, to uh, teaching degrees from the BA Humanities. Um, while you're doing your studies, it's always important to just um, check back with your module coordinators that you've selected the right combination of modules. As Neve explained, there's a very, very big uh, choice there on offer. So it's just really about balancing the choice when you're making your choices that you take enough English and enough classics modules, and then there should be no problem um, in going on to become a teacher. I have a question for you, Neve. Um, someone is wondering what societies you would recommend. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a good question. Um, from my personal experience, I was involved with Dram Sock, Musical Sock, uh, The Radio, so Belfield FM, Film Sock, Lit Sock are really cool as well. There's also like subject specific ones. So like there's a classic society, a history society, um, which is a really good way to meet people. So it depends on your personal interests, but those would have been the societies I was drawn to. And then there's obviously like big debating societies as well, like LMH and Law Sock. Food Sock do a lot of like really big marketing events and are like a really fun group of people. Um, but yeah, those would be like the big ones I recommend, but definitely in Freshers Week, like try out different things, go to different events, meet new people, and you'll see where you are drawn to and then just trust your gut. Great advice, Neve. Thank you very much. And one final one for you. Um, given your internship area, do you think you're going to go on and work in this sector? Um, 
I came out of my internship being like, oh my God, absolutely. I want to be an archivist. I want to work in a museum. Um, but coming back to college, actually, because I ha- having that time away from academics, I definitely was like really focused on my work and my job. Um, and then when I came back into college, I was doing these, these modules that are were like really research based. And I realized that I, the things that I love are like interdisciplinary in their own way. So I actually want to go on and do further research and I want to work in archives and also in like oral histories um, and kind of like connecting all of my experiences. But it's funny, I definitely thought I would be a museum worker at one point. I thought I'd be a teacher at one point. I've gone through many phases of careers, I think, in UCD. (laughs) That's great to hear. Thank you so much. Um, And one question for you, Gillian, and then I think we're going to need to close it out. Um, uh, Is it possible to change between courses along the way? Okay, well, that is uh, that is a good question. And it is it is something that's um, possible, dependent on where you started. Certainly in the BA, the, 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 the main BA programme, that's something that's built in in the sense that you will start with three subjects and then you can. So if you think, for example, oh, I really want to do French and history and then you try out classics and you realise, actually, I love classics, then you can take that instead of, of one of the subjects you came in to do. That's absolutely possible. We do. It is possible to transfer between programmes and that depends then on what modules you've done. So some students do transfer after their first year and it will depend on the combination of modules that they've done. So it's, it's possible. There's certainly flexibility built into the system. That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, everybody.